city of Ambala in Haryana. What's cool about Ambala is that it is located on a water divide. Now on one side of the city is the basin of the Indus River and on the other side we have the Ganga River Basin which we are going to talk about right now. The River Ganga is a lifeline for the millions of people who live along its banks. It is also considered as one of the most sacred rivers in India by the Hindus. The river originates in the state of Uttarakhand. Its head stream called Bhagirathi, fed by the Gangotri glacier, is joined by another head stream called the Alaknanda in the town of Devprayag. From this point, the river is known as Ganga. At Hardwar, the Ganga enters the plains. It is joined later by many tributaries such as the Ghagra, the Gandak, the Kosi, which originate from the Himalayas. Another Himalayan tributary, the Yamuna, rises from the Yamnotri glacier in Uttarakhand. It flows almost parallel to the Ganga and is joined by two tributaries, the Chambal and the Betwa from the central highlands. Finally, the Yamuna meets the river Ganga as its right bank tributary at Prayagraj. Another tributary, the Son River, meets the Ganga near Patna in Bihar. Hey, guess what's common between these three tributaries? Well, all of them rise from the semi-arid regions and have shorter courses with less water discharge. Now, River Ganga combined with the flow of its tributaries moves to the east towards the town of Faraka, situated in West Bengal. This place marks the northernmost point of the Ganga Delta. From here, the river divides into two branches. The major branch flows into Bangladesh and is joined by the Brahmaputra. Further downstream, it is known as the Meghna. This mighty river carrying waters from the Ganga and Brahmaputra eventually drains into the Bay of Bengal. The other distributary of the Ganga, known as the Bhagirathi Hugli, flows southwards through the Deltaic Plains and also drains into the Bay of Bengal. The entire journey of the river Ganga stretches to over 2,500 kilometers. When the river is in its middle course, it creates landforms called meanders. The very gentle slope from Ambala to the Sundarbans allows the river to flow slowly creating this landform. Just to give you an idea about how gentle the slope is, let me use some mathematics. The distance between Ambala and the Sundarbans is about 1800 kilometers and the difference in their altitudes is just 300 meters. This means that there is a fall of just one meter for every six kilometers. The river Ganga and its tributaries are huge and bountiful. During the monsoons, when it rains heavily, the river tends to overflow and flood the region around. This causes widespread damage and destruction to life and property. But there is a silver lining. These floods bring along a lot of nutrient-rich sediments that get deposited in various places in the basin. Now, due to this deposition, the soil in the area around these rivers is extremely fertile, which is a boon to the farmers, naturally. Now, another striking feature of the basin can be observed near the end of the river's journey. Before draining into the Bay of Bengal, the river creates the largest delta in the world, the Sundarban Delta. 
A fascinating feature of the region is that it is teeming with wildlife. The Royal Bengal Tiger are the Delta's most famous wild inhabitants. The Delta serves as one of the largest reserves for the Bengal Tigers.